Okay. Assalamualaikum uh, Dan selamat sejahtera So for today We will learn about Chapter 1 Introduction to Fate Power You can download These notes From our Google Classroom So make sure These notes is Already in front of you Okay Um, the first one, what is fluid power? Okay, based on the definition in the chapter one notes, fluid power is the technology that deals with the generation, control, and transmission of power by using pressurized fluid. This is the keywords pressurized fluid. So anything regarding to fluid power, there will be pressurized fluid involved in the system. Okay. Fluid power technology used to push, pull, regulate, drive visually all types of modern industries machines. Flip power can be used to push, pull, regulate, drive visually all types of modern industries machine. Okay, so the fluid power is very extensively used in the industries. Okay, and it can be categorized into two types: hydraulics and pneumatics. Okay. This is simple. Hydraulic will use liquid. Pneumatics use gas. So both of liquid and gas are the element of the fluid itself. Fluids contain liquid or gas. Both of them are fluids. We call fluid. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, let's say hydraulic system use liquid. Example of liquid is oil, uh, and oil can be come from the petroleum or synthetic oil, or also can be the water-based fluid. Okay, so pneumatics is just simple, plain of gas, but gas may be come from air or any type of gas. This picture shows the example of the pump this is a tank we can found it in the lab uh, that use the hydraulic and pneumatic system okay type of fluid system uh, fluid transport and fluid power okay fluid transport delivering fluid from one location to another to accomplish some useful work as well as control of power mobile equipment example of the fluid transport we can found in the pumping station where the pumping water to homes and also the cross country gas line example cross country gas line you can found from north states kedah perlis and all the way go to the south states to Johor and uh, from Terengganu to Johor because we have Kerteh refinery in uh, Terengganu and in Johor we now are developing for the Penerang refinery and from there they distribute the air through the gas line up to the north states Okay, so the fluid power designed specifically to perform work, perform work through pressurized fluid bearing directly on a operating fluid system or fluid motor. Example you can see here is the chainsaw that use hydraulic system and the chain hoist that use the pneumatic system. Okay, in this slide shows the advantages and disadvantages of fluid power. Advantage of fluid power is 
it is easy and accuracy of control it also can multiply of force from the small or weak force it can be multiplied to high force and torque okay and the third point of advantage uh, is it is has high torque at low speed and the last one it is simple and safe and also cheap economy lah. okay but there are also of the flaws or disadvantages uh, the hydraulic oil are messy and can be leaked the leakage is impossible to eliminate completely that's why after a few years of the hydraulic system you have to regularly maintain and check to check its leakage okay second disadvantages is hydraulic line can burst it quite uh, dangerous if we cannot do to preventive maintenance and regularly check the lines or hose or tubes because it can simultaneously burst uh, if the lifespan it, uh, ends its lifespan at the end of its lifespan okay and pump also very noisy uh, and the compressed air tank and accumulator potentially explosive if pressure beyond of since of safe design limit okay this is contradict to our advantage where we say that it is safety and economy in the fourth point here but every safe system is also can be dangerous if the system use at beyond of its safe design limit okay okay we break here yeah, i want to check if any other problem you can see it in the comment section or in our youtube live continue with our lecture okay the applications of fluid flu uh, fluid power can be found in the mobile industries uh, this is the common application we found in the real life okay this example here is back hole back holes uh, here fluid power is used to transport to do transport excavate and lift materials as well as control of power mobile equipments and use industries include construction agriculture marine and the military okay so 
uh, as example in this excavator we found the applications of fluid power are extensively or widely used in its system example uh, we can say uh, we can see this engine from the engine it gives the energy to the hydraulic pump and hydraulic pump will uh, drive the fluids of oil or synthetic oil to the control valve and from the control valve we travel to motor and final drive so it can move in backward and forward and if it goes to the its arm it can uh, it can drive the fluids to cylinder uh, which is in this picture is boom cylinder stick cylinder and bucket cylinder and finally to the hydraulic cylinder to its bucket so bucket will move up down up down so it can uh, take the things that they want to uh, transport or they want to correct lah lebih kurang untuk drill ke okay Okay, in the industrial, we can found many things that use the fluid power as its applications, such as the industrial robots, uh, automated manipulator, material handling, and so on. And in the aerospace, we also can found in its gear, brakes, flight controls, motor controls and cargo loading equipment okay so uh, the major components in the fluid power system are the pumping device because if it use the fluid uh, means hydraulic or pneumatic so it needs the pumping device for the pneumatic we use air compressor and for the hydraulic uh, we also will use the gear pump okay fluid conductor uh, come maybe uh, in the form of tubes hoses fitting manifolds and other components that will distribute pressurized fluid from the energy source and to the end things such like we see here in the excavator to the arm bucket okay so fluid ni pipe je tube ke yang menyalurkan uh, air ataupun liquid okay uh, we also have control valve sebab uh, setiap sistem yang pakai udara, gas or liquid mesti kena ada valve untuk stopkan dia ataupun control dia punya flow. So, those controls we call control valve. And actuator. Actuator are the cylinders, motors, rotary, actuator, gripper, vacuum cup, and other components that perform the end function of the fluid power system. Actuator ni yang last kali, yang dapatkan output yang kita nak. Okay, contoh dalam excavator ni, yang ni lah last dia hydraulic cylinder actuator dia dekat sini hydraulic cylinder ok sekarang ada beberapa komponen yang awak kena ingat first one pumping device sumber dia second one we must have the conductor yang penghubung dia tu kita panggil dia fluid conductor the third one 
we have control valve yang ni nak control flow nak tutup nak slow nak bagi besar flow dia ke kita control dekat control valve and the fourth major component is actuator okey actuator kalau tak ada tak ada guna sebab tak hasilkan output yang kita nak so actuator ni pun sangat penting sebab actuator ni akan berbeza-beza output uh, depends on what you want to the system ok lepas tu kita ada support components ni lain-lain uh, lah dan lain-lain ok example of support components there are filters heat exchangers manifolds hydraulic reservoir pneumatic muffler and other components that enable the fluid power system to operate more effectively so overall we have four major components that are very essential to our fluid power system and plus the others the others we call it support components okay so there are four majors plus one one to support components okay i repeat the first one we have drive pumping device okay second we have conductor third we have control valve fourth we have actuators and the last one support components Okay, so we break one minute. I will check if you have uh, the, uh, if you have any question. I will try to ask instantly. Okay. okay now we check 
uh, what are the similarities and differences between hydraulic and pneumatic components okay this is the similarity in the hydraulic system it will use tank reservoir to hold the hydraulic oil but in the pneumatic system we use air tank this you uh, hydraulic use the liquid pneumatic use the air okay in a hydraulic we use pump pump is used to provide fluid power to the system okay pump is the source of energy to the hydraulic system but in the pneumatic system we use compressor to provide fluid power to the system in hydraulic we use pump pneumatic we use compressor ingat tu eh kalau sebut compressor je tu adalah pneumatic sebab compressor guna untuk air pump memang guna untuk liquid minyak ke air ke kita panggil dia pump tak panggil dia compressor ok hydraulic also use electric motor pneumatic pun sama electric motor or other power to drive pump kalau boleh sambung dengan soket electric kita pakai electric motor kalau dia pakai engine uh, engine minyak ke engine diesel ke tu pun boleh asalkan dia boleh bagi power ok for the uh, hydraulic system kita guna valve uh, valve are used to control direction pressure and flow rate also in the pneumatic system we use valve sama lah kan ok untuk actuator pun sama sebab actuator ni guna to convert the pressure into functional or useful mechanical work dekat pneumatic pun sama lah kalau perasan dekat ujung-ujung bawah ni semua sama sebab function hydraulic system and pneumatic system ni sama cuma beza dia pneumatic pakai air hydraulic pakai liquid bila air kita pakai compressor bila liquid kita pakai pump ok ni uh, this one is the example of hydraulic system awak tengok dia ada reservoir simpan minyak ataupun air lepas tu kita ada pump tapi uh, to drive the pump we must have energy source energy source ni come from the prime mover dekat sini prime mover ni boleh dari electric motor ataupun daripada engine diesel engine uh, gasoline engine apa-apa yang boleh hasilkan rotational energy so from prime mover it will drive the pump and pump will drive the liquid ataupun minyak ataupun air to the pressure gauge pressure gauge is the indicator of how high or high how low the pressure in the conductor dalam kes ni conductor ni pakai hose ataupun tube ni ok lepas tu dia akan pergi ke pressure control valve kita tahu valve uh, is used to regulate or control the flow sini boleh tutup boleh buka boleh kecilkan besarkan uh, dekat control valve and then 
the system also has the directional control valve kat sini so dia control direction sis uh, uh, direction of the flow which direction the flow has to go uh, dekat sini ke or kat bawah ni kalau dekat sini awak tutup control valve so dia hanya lalu dekat sini so bila lalu dekat sini fluid akan gerakkan actuator so dalam case ni mungkin dia akan backward ataupun retract kalau dia buka dua-dua ni so dia akan pergi ke dua-dua hose so dia akan tolak liquid tu akan tolak piston ni piston ni pun uh, akan gerakkan actuator untuk gerakkan something dekat sini lah ok ni contoh basic system of hydraulic ok ni pneumatic beza tadi pneumatic dengan hydraulic adalah tank dia sebab sini ada air tank dan beza paling besar dia hydraulic use the liquid pneumatic use the air the gas ok dekat ujung-ujung ni sama je konsep akan ada actuator akan ada valve akan, semua je ada lubricator ni function untuk uh, kurangkan friction of air in the hose ok so bila ada air pun dia ada filter tapi liquid dekat hydraulic pun uh, sometimes they have the filter itself ok yang main beza dia dekat depan ni pneumatic pakai compressor hydraulic pakai pump ok uh, ni kalau tengok dekat sini dia cakap uh, what are the differences between hydraulic and pneumatic system hydraulic system uh, dia cakap apa ni engineering science pertaining to liquid pressure and flow it can operate at high pressure Pneumatic engineering science pertaining to gaseous pressure and flow. Okay, lepas tu, hydraulic use liquid, pneumatic use air. Hydraulic is accurate, pneumatic less accurate. Okay, hydraulic provide rigid medium for transmitting power. Pneumatic exhibit spongy characteristic compressibility due to compressibility of air. Hydraulic is expensive. Pneumatic is cheaper. Okay, that's about summary dia senang lah. Hydraulic pakai liquid. Bila pakai liquid, dia akan lebih accurate. Dia akan boleh bagi power yang lebih Tapi dia jadi mahal Sebab sistem dia become more complicated Compared to pneumatic system Jadi kalau untuk heavy duty Kita pakai hydraulic Untuk less heavy duty Kita pakai pneumatic system Okay, so ni dah sampai ke hujung chapter 1. Tu saja chapter 1 because this is just the introduction to fluid power. Saya nak hari ni saya akan letak soalan tutorial ni dalam Google Classroom. So, awak semua kena jawab dalam tu. Okay. Okay, baru setengah jam. Kita tengok video dulu.
1800s, Blaise Pascal, a French mathematician, made a very good power is to transmit power from one location to another. In the mid-1600s, Blaise Pascal, a French mathematician, made a very important contribution in the field of fluid motion. This contribution, known as Pascal's Law, relates the transfer of pressure through a fluid. Pascal determined that a contained pressurized fluid will exert pressure equally in all directions. Pascal's law states that pressure set up in a confined body of fluid acts equally in all directions and always at right angles to the containing surfaces. Another important property of fluid mechanics was discovered in the late 1600s by Robert Boyle, an Irish physicist. Boyle's law is an experimental gas law which describes how the pressure of a gas increases as the volume of gas decreases. A modern statement of Boyle's law is the absolute pressure of a confined body of gas varies inversely as its volume, provided its temperature remains constant. In a physical system, this means that as the volume decreases, the pressure increases. Similarly, as the volume increases, the pressure decreases. Boyle's law can be expressed mathematically as the pressure at state 1 times the volume at state 1 is equal to the pressure at state 2 times the volume at state 2. This is true as long as both the temperature and mass, or amount of gas, remains constant. In the late 1700s, Jacques Charles, a French scientist and mathematician, discovered an important rule regarding gases under pressure. Charles's law, also known as the Law of Volumes, is an experimental gas law which describes how gases tend to expand when heated. It states that if the pressure of a gas is constant and its temperature is raised, the volume will also be raised by the same ratio. Additionally, the inverse is true. If the pressure of a gas is constant and the temperature is lowered, the volume will also lower. Charles's law can be expressed mathematically as the ratio of the temperature at state 1 to the volume at state 1 is equal to the ratio of the temperature at state 2 to the volume at state 2. This law is true as long as the pressure and mass remain constant. In the mid-1700s, Danielle Bernoulli discovered another very powerful rule in the field of fluid mechanics, known as Bernoulli's Principle. This rule is related to the theory of conservation of energy, which states that energy can neither be created or destroyed. In this fluid system, pressure is potential energy and fluid flow is kinetic energy. Bernoulli's principle states that an increase in the speed of an incompressible fluid occurs simultaneously with a decrease in pressure. This is illustrated by the flow of water through a pipe. The volume of water flow through all three sections is the same. When the water's flow is restricted in section B, the speed of the water increases to maintain the same amount of volumetric flow. This increase of speed simultaneously causes a decrease in pressure. When the flow of water reaches section C, the inverse occurs. The water flow decreases and the pressure increases. This rule can also apply to the types of energy present in the system. As the pressure decreases in section B, the potential energy converts into kinetic energy. This increases the speed of water flow and decreases the pressure. When the water reaches section C, the kinetic energy is converted back to potential energy. This is illustrated by the decrease in speed of the water flow and its simultaneous increase in pressure. The Purpose of Fluid Power
Okey. Kalau ada soalan, tanya dalam komen ni. Saya akan cuba jawab. Okey, sekarang kita rehat lima minit.
awak kena isi attendance form dekat sini dan isi what did you learn today apa yang saya tanya dalam video tadi Uh, saya ulang lah Saya tanya tadi List down the major components In the fluid power system So list kat sini Ada berapa Dan setiap um, Components tu Namakan dia Based on Our notes Apa yang dalam notes tu Tulis balik dekat sini List the major components of fluid power system Okay uh, Dekat discussion, question and answer Awak kena jawab soalan ni Compare the difference between pneumatic So make sure jawab soalan ni Nanti dia akan keluar berapa orang yang jawab Saya akan semak lah Okay, deadline dia due 17 Oktober Bila? Lusa Okay, untuk video for every live video After I post it In the YouTube, I will list down the link to the video in under class section here. Jadi kalau nak refer balik, nak check balik lecture, awak tengok dekat sini. Okay, okay, itu je lah untuk hari ini. Uh, kalau ada masalah, if you have any question regarding to the lecture. Or our course Let me know By Tulis dekat whatsapp group Ataupun Tulis soalan awak Ataupun kat sini lah Tanya dekat sini Tapi lagi senang Kalau tanya dalam whatsapp group Saya boleh Baca terus Okay So that's all for today Uh, Assalamualaikum dan selamat petang.